Hello and welcome back to Page Chewing Comics and Manga Pick of the Week, episode number 47. This is a podcast where we talk about mostly new, primarily single issue comics. My name is Mike and I'm back here once again with Steve. We will be sharing what we read this past week, including our very own Pick of the Week. If you're joining us for the first time, we are two guys who are back in the swing of the weekly poll comics thing. Sometimes they're, uh, you know, uh, in your hands, comics, uh, physical comics. And what not, now and again, we, we do pick up some digital comics. I will admit to that. Um, so <laughs> that is the case for me this week. I have two hard I don't know what you, they're not hard copies, if you will, but two physical copies and two digital physical. copies. Um, so S Steve, how, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, kind of an up and down week. I think it was a couple of really good ones and nothing I hated, but nothing I was, there was a few that I just wasn't, wasn't feeling at all. You know, just, you know, you get to a certain point and it's like, this just isn't for me. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not terrible. It's not poorly done. It's just not for mm -hmm. me. So there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I feel kind of almost exactly the same. Like I, I didn't have anything that I was really, you know, saddened about or disappointed with. And I have one uh, series finale that I will be talking about and maybe speaking a little bit about how I felt about the series overall. And um, we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, and we are getting close to issue 50 mm -hmm. for the podcast, if you can believe that. <laughs> so anyone listening, if you have any questions to send us, um, either drop us a DM on our page showing forum. There's also a link in the description for to send us a note or a message. You can click on that and send us a text message. And we'll read off questions you submit on the 50th episode. With that out of the way, mm -hmm. I guess I'll kick things off this week. The first one I have this week was Bear Pirate Viking Queen, number two. Those of you who listen to the podcast know that I really love the first issue. I really love the first issue. The art was gorgeous. Lots of themes were explored. History really dug in deep. It was one of those books that just really grabbed me pretty quickly. So I was excited to, to read the second issue, even though it was a complete one. It was a complete change in, in POV. It was completely different. To be fair, the first issue is a double size issue and it does switch midway through. So very similar to that switch. Just I had to wait for issue two. So yeah, but I, I really loved it. I just think the second issue focuses focuses on the Viking. In the first issue, we get the bear and the pirate. And I just felt like the, the second issue with the Viking just didn't didn't get like in depth. It didn't really explore the Viking and the Vikings history and the the Norse mythology is a lot to play around with Norse mythology and history with, with Vikings. And th there's a lot there and I just don't, I just don't feel like it really explored too much of that. It, it didn't explore it very heavy. It wasn't very heavy handed in the first issue, but it did explore certain themes and, and ideas. And I just feel like the second issue just wasn't as good. The art was still good, but it had a different, a different tone, had different colors to it. It, it felt it didn't feel as, as dense. It didn't feel as, as, as immersive. The, the second issue felt a little lighter. There was more whites. It was more about the lines. It wasn't more about, it wasn't so much about the colors and the backgrounds and landscapes. It was more up, up close and personal and it just didn't pull me in. The first one did. It wasn't bad. I'll keep reading it because I think the artwork is just gorgeous. But issue two was, I think it's hard when you have such a, a fantastic first issue. It's hard to follow it up. With an issue, within a second issue that is on par with the first, so it was okay. It was good. Yeah, a little bit of a letdown. And if I remember, that's the one that has the watercolor. Yeah. Okay. I asked that because um, something I will be talking about is I, I believe is primarily done with watercolor as well. I'm not going to say mm. what that is yet. We'll save some suspense until later. We'll find out here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
we'll, we'll find out. Um, Liam, yeah, I have an idea. Obviously, because I can, I can, I know the list, so I, I have an idea what you're referring to. But I'm like, I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. Oh, cool. So this is um, the one that I'm going to be speaking about first, and I think we we both read it uh, this past week or so. Mm -hmm. um, is Napalm Lullaby Number Four? It's a catchy title. This is again by by Rick Remender, um, and the artist is a mononym of Bengal. Um, I will mention that I personally am reading four, four concurrent Rick Remender series. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm sticking with those series. <laughs> and um, so, um, you know, I think we've, we've talked about, I think we're going to even talk about another one today, um, which is Sacrificers. But um, mm -hmm. he's the sole author for this one, um, as well as Sacrificers. And here we are learning more about the two main characters who are Sarah and Sam and the, about kind of their special abilities. Um, so um, I guess, I guess Sam appears to have some, he's some type of an empath empath and, or has feels some sort of psychic pain, I believe. And it's not revealed uh, until later in the issue, but we learn that, uh, Sarah, who I understand is his sister, can kind of, I guess she like dreams about the future and then it happens. But it, anyway, so she has some uh, kind of precog, precognitive ability. So I found that to be interesting. Um, so I don't feel like that's a big spoiler uh, per se at all um, because it's hinted to that um, probably way back in issue one. So, um, there is a, there is a narrator at the, that goes along the story that you're not totally sure who it is, but I, I found that to be a really interesting choice. Um, and I believe it is one of the characters. Um, so eventually you kind of figure out who it is. Um, so that, that's just a stylistic choice that for me just kept me guessing, kept me interested. We learn a little bit about, um, some of these kind of baddies, like the big bad people a little bit. Um, and I will say the artwork has remained to be pretty good quality. It's very bright. It's, this is a, for me, a lot more minimal, minimalist. There is a lot of action. You know, there's, uh, the, the two, our, our two heroes are, if you will, are kind of being chased after the, the events of the previous issue. Um, by some very powerful type of comic book looking character with a cape. Um, so anyway, just mm -hmm. to say it's, it's really, the story is coming along. Um, I will say I, I read, so at the end of, I think almost all of Rick Remender's series, he has like a le letters section and mm -hmm. he, I, I saw that he calls this a slow burn mystery. It's definitely slow burn. So there is some mystery elements that we are starting to learn about in this issue about, about these two characters. Um, so I won't, I probably won't reveal too much more at this time. Um, <laughs> unless you would like to Steve, I, I overall, I, I thought this was an improvement. Um, oh. not like a, not a huge improvement, but I, I remain, I, re I remain intrigued, but maybe cautiously optimistic if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I have similar feelings. Speaking of Remender, mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize we're reading that many, or well, you're reading Gromit's yeah. right. This Remender. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just one of those writers that I just, whatever he's doing, I'm, I'm going to check out. And it's funny you mentioned the letter section because I, I saw that too. I got to the end of the issue and I thought, what am I, this feels weird. And I read the letter section and it does mention being a slow burn. So I thought, okay, good. It's not just me. So it made me feel better because this is a very battle heavy up or issue. And it was a, I thought it was kind of a weird choice because we start off really slowly. Yeah. And we build on it. We, we did build to this battle, but I feel like it, it, it kind of felt off like in maybe it's because we're reading it month to month and not all in all at once, but it, it did feel a little, a little bit off of the moment with the pacing of the rest of the story. But um, yeah, so 
Well, yeah, overall it was fine. I, I think it, it was a little strange to be so, so, so much action in this, in this issue, no. but I'm still on board with it. I still have faith that it's going to work out. The only thing I'll say, I think, you know, I'm not a religious person, but I think religion, there's certain topics that are easy to dunk on and you know, like the certain things that are just easy to, to bring into a story and just kind of dunk on things and just kind of, and I feel like it's a little heavy handed with the religious stuff. And I, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's not like, I hope it doesn't go, I hope that's not the direction that, I hope that's not the focus it has moving forward. Cause it's, it's just too, it's too easy to do that kind of thing. And it's just not interesting. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind exploring certain topics or discussing things or kind of, you know, bringing ideas and, and giving you kind of food for thought. But I hope it doesn't continue uh, on that trajectory. So, but again, it's Remender. Um, so I'll, I'll be reading it either way. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think the, the issue was good. And I think the series has lots of potential. I'm looking at for it to go, for it to start off slow, slowly in this issue four, it feels like we're moving a lot faster. So I wonder where it's going to go from here. Yeah. Like what, what's next for this story? Cause I'm, I'm not sure what direction it's going, but you know, after reading the sacrificers or any of his other books, it's like, well, he knows what he's doing and I'll, I'll just be along for the ride. I will say that, you know, issue one was, had a bit of a fair bit of action. And that was like a, you kind of like you get whiplash reading this Mm -hmm. first issue. So I guess we were, it's been, it's been what, three months (laughs) or so since that's the thing with these waiting, you know, for, you know, for, for a while to get to the next issue. Um, But I, I, I can see your point on maybe, yeah, just being a little surprised with all of the the battles scene, I I, mm-hmm. I found it I found it to be to be interesting. It was okay because it was yeah. also revealing about the character as characters as well. So for me, that That's that true. helps. It's very true. That's a good point. So the next uh, issue, I don't know why I keep doing this. Why do I do this to myself? I, I I see the issue. I see the cover for Destro number one. And it just looks cool. It just looks neat. And I've <laughs> I've not been the biggest fan of the G.I. Joe titles. I just haven't gotten into them. I've read a few of them. And I know people really enjoy them, and that's great. And I'm happy for you. I just they just don't tickle my fancy. Um, but I saw the the cover for Destro One. Thought I'd give it a go. And I'm happy to report it wasn't bad. I didn't cool. really dislike it was fine. I think the the only thing that the thing that makes me nervous about these, these type of universes is that if, if I feel like if I don't read all of the titles, I won't get it. So if I think one title is okay and I'm willing to give it a shot, does that mean I have to buy the other three or four to know what's going on in the one title I like? That's what worries me a little. But the cover got me on this one. Um, so Destro is an arms dealer. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't report... He, he doesn't report to Cobra Commander. He works with Cobra Commander, so he has some agency in what happens. He has plans of his own, and he, he's not he's not tied to them. He's not tied to Cobra, the organization. He's tied to them, but he doesn't report to them. He's not one of their soldiers. The, the, the book has enough to keep me going. I think the writing and the art was fine. Um, yeah. I'll give it another issue or so, see where it goes. Like I said, the only concern I have is how much is tied into the other titles. And But overall, it was fine. It was good. I'll try issue two and see what happens. But I recall that you read Cobra Commander and you didn't, you weren't falling, falling in. <laughs> no, but I better be careful because I'm going to start to be known as the G.I. Joe guy if I'm not careful. <laughs> I'm going to take your title from you. <laughs> I have yet to read any of those, but, um, you know, back in the day when I was a young lad, I think I, I think I was, I was interested in the cartoons. So that's fine. I'll take that moniker. Um, so here comes the, this is an exciting moment in the podcast where we get to a series finale. I'm talking mm-hmm. about Guma 
G-U-M-A-A. This is issue number seven. Um, and uh, I've this is from Titan Comics, I should mention. And I've neglected to say over over um, the past you know few months, maybe I mentioned at the beginning, but it has a subtitle, which is Beginning of Her. So it's Guma, Beginning of Her. Anyway. I'll get I'll get to that in a moment. This is fifty one pages, so it's a pretty big issue. Um, and uh, we pick up where we left off with I, for those of you that are following. Um, and I mention that because I don't think my comic store is carrying this, so I have been picking it up online um, using Hoopla. Shout out to mm. Hoopla. It's a great platform Definitely. through your public mm-hmm. library, I, at least if you're in the States. I don't know if it's carried elsewhere. Um, so we have, if we, if we recall, uh, Brenna is kind of the, the hero um, who is trying to battle the evil uh, Kalida, who has kind of become this uh, <laughs> like a priestess nun character that wields an evil dagger and is able to make people into zombies um so there is quite a lot going on in this in this story in terms of maybe um i wouldn't say plot devices but maybe tropes there is a fair amount of tropes going on here i will say i i have been in love with the artwork from the beginning i continue it's still very very good um but you know it there this ends without giving too much detail of the very end because it is you know seven We're talking about seven issues. Um, There is a big battle that um, is done extremely well. I mean, that's what this book is able to do. I will say, and it hasn't really changed, but I've not been a huge fan of the dialogue um, per se. It's it's not that it's bad. It's just a little stiff for me. Um, But there's, yeah, like I said, there's a real epic confrontation at the end. Um, and there, you know, it's, there's something related to the, the, the special dagger that I, that I referenced. So I come back to, um, the subtitle, which is beginning of her. And at the end, you will be asking what that ex- actually means. So I will not say anything further, but it's a very interesting ending. Um, possibly leaving it to have a volume two or whatever, but yeah, I got to say it's, you know, if you are a fan of just beautiful artwork, high quality, just really high quality, like a, a to a plus, And you're just, you just want like a, a fantastical romp, you know, type of thing. This is for you. Yeah. So that's mm. the series in a nutshell. Um, I don't think it's for everyone. I think it, you know, it is like a urban horror fantasy yet it's more for a, I think it's for a teen plus audience yet there is quite a lot of gore and, and whatnot. So. Hmm. <laughs> well, now that it's finished, I should try and look for it on my hoopla. <laughs> it's only in the single issues. Um, and I only get so many rentals per month, but they may come out with a volume and that yeah. often happens on there. Yeah, no, this is a this is a series you've been reading. I think from the beginning, mm-hmm. right? I think where is it issue two or one? One. I think I started. I might have been the first or second time. I I I joined you, so I mm-hmm. think this is maybe my seventh month. So it, uh, wow. actually, I think this came out a little while ago. So this isn't. This certainly isn't brand new. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, it was still uh, worth mentioning. I think. Well. I know that we'll wrap up another series here in a minute. I'm excited to to talk about it. Cool. But before I get into that, just really quickly, I want to mention Spawn 354. I've been trying to get back into Spawn. I, I've been I've really been trying. I love the art by Brett Booth. Uh, it shines. I, the The style. I love the style. I just can't get into this book. I just can't. I just don't care. It feels like a like another. When when I think about Im- Spawn and Image superhero titles, I think back to the the nineties when it was 
for as horrible as a lot of those titles were, it felt they had a different feel to them and they didn't feel like not all of them. Some of them had a different feel to them. They felt, I don't know, maybe because they edgier or they felt different. They were taking chances. They were doing things they couldn't do. The creators were doing things they couldn't do at DC or Marvel at the time. So they were kind of going crazy a little bit with things that they were trying. They were trying different things. But now it just, it just feels like another superhero book and it just feels very by the numbers. We're still in this, this, you know, everyone's depowered after the events of 350 of spawn 350 and we're in this vampire war thing. And I, I just, I'm just really losing interest. I just, there's a surprise death at the end when it happened. I just, I felt nothing uh, because probably I'm not connected to the characters maybe, but I, I just, I'm just really struggling getting into it. I just, I really want to like it. I really want to be into this, into the series. I really want to get into it. I just, I just, I, it was a slog to get through some parts and I just, I, I'm hanging on just in hopes that something will grab me that maybe this, this storyline will finish and we'll, we'll start something else. But so far it's, it's, I'm getting to the edge of my, my patience with this one. I just, I just I'm not getting, I just don't get it. Uh, so speaking of the end of a series, issue five of the one hand came out this week. This is the, the book. I, I just finished it right before we started recording. And this is the book of the killer and the detective, the one hand and the left hand, the two books that are kind of following each other. The one hand is the detective's perspective. And this book goes places and does things that I did. There's, just did not expect it, it kind of, it, if not, for the, if not for my other pick if, for any other week, this would have easily been the pick of the week. It is just so good. It's the kind of book that you get to the end and I had chills. I had goosebumps reading it just because it, it's whatever you think will happen. Chances are you have no idea what the conclusion will be. It blew me away. So good. It's it just, such a great conclusion. It's really hard to nail to hit the landing, but I'm still thinking about it and I'll be thinking about this one for a while because it is pretty damn good. So the one hand issue five, I'm really, I'm li- really looking forward to seeing how the left hand finishes up, oh, yeah. which is the killer's perspective. It, it, is that coming out um, this week or I don't think so. I think it's next okay. week. Yeah, but I'm gonna be waiting for that one because I, I was blown away with it. One hand, the conclusion, so good. You don't have to answer this question, but does it kind of lead off with a little bit of a, I don't know if it's cliffhanger is the right word, but is it kind of really gear you up to read then that that other issue or? Yeah, well, I think it's it's self contained. Okay. I think you can probably read this and and have a complete story. But each one stands stands on its own. But when you, when you put them together, it just makes it really special. Okay, it sounds really cool. Um, I'm vicariously, um, you know, uh, tuning in to your to these to these two kind of simultaneously issues because I don't think they're being carried at my local comic store. Um, but I may pick them up later. Um, so, okay. I think this is now time for my pick of the week. And this is Crocodile Black, number one from Boom Studios. And this is by Philip Kennedy Johnson with artwork by SOM or S O M. That's, that's Hmm. the name. So um, I believe that's not the first time I've seen that name, but I, I, I did do a quick search and I didn't come up with anything else. And that's important because the artwork is stunning. Um, So it starts off with kind of a grisly scene, you know, with some clear, you know, some type of really crazy maniacal murderer killer who he just has these, you know, very quirky signatures that he leaves, including like, uh, his boot prints of, of blood and possibly reptilian friends uh, that he leaves at the scenes of his crime. So that's that's interesting uh, on its own, but usually not enough for me to get really you know excited. I'm not, 
that's not the kind of thing I, I'll, I, I necessarily go for. So the, the other, this, you know, you cut to then this kid, uh, his name is Danny, who's just like a, I think he's living with his parents. He could be in high school or early, you know, or late teens, maybe 19. It's not clear. And he like delivers, he delivers groceries to people. Um, and he kind of comes across, comes across one of the, the crime, the crime scenes of this killer who is the titular crocodile black. And so that's quite interesting. Um, but we do learn a lot more about uh, the character, the, the Danny character. He's about his backstory. He has a complicated family life. He has a troubled past as well. His past also haunts him. So <laughs> it's quite interesting how that is uh, interweaved into the story. I, I, I really found it uh, fascinating. Um, so it's uh, the artwork is primarily watercolor, very gritty and grim, with some kind of wireframe squiggles as well. So it's not just it's, and that represents something that Danny sees that's his past haunting him. And I will just say because I, I know Steve read it, there is some ode in a way to the killer be killed series. And we remember that character seeing like a something in this case, something. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening here. It's maybe just, um, it, it's not ex in, in that, in that series, it's like a demon. And in this case, that's, it's not exactly what's happening, but it's just very interesting. Um, and I, I don't know where the story is going and, you know, I, I, I like that. So I, I didn't expect to really like it. I just, but I, I think that the artwork just sets the tone so well, um, you know, for the, for the story. And, and that's, I'm really falling for that kind of stuff now where the, the story and the artwork kind of work together very well. Um, and uh, yeah, that's my pick of the week. I'm curious to see what happens next. Wow. Mm. I am really glad you talked about this one because the, the cover seemed a little goofy to me yeah. and that's why I didn't pick it up, but it has really great ratings. It has a, a 94 mm. on league of, league of comic book geeks. So, you know, we've talked about our thoughts on, on kind of ratings and things like that. So let's hit or miss, but it seems like it's pretty popular. And, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm glad you brought it up. Cause I'll keep my eyes out for this one for sure. Yeah. No, I, I, I was like, I was like, maybe I'll check this out. And the, and then, and it's just like, I don't know. It's just a set set, uh, just does a great job setting a tone, but then making a, 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 a 90 degree turn. So yeah, we'll see what happens with this one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh. Well, now, now I have to pick it up. What made you pick this one up? Um, I will be honest with you. I, I walked away from my comic store experience last week empty handed. So I did find this one also online. Um, again, hoopla. <laughs> if it's okay to say that, I, I, I you know, it's, it's yeah. something that you can get through your library um, and for people, I mean, these comics, it's not because of, I did not see it at the shop. And so I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a chance, you know? Um, and, um, yeah, so I, I, I don't, maybe I read a little, I, I think the author is also, I might've looked up the author. Philip Kennedy Johnson has done a lot of other work, I think in, mm -hmm. in the Marvel or DC and a bit of his own stuff. So he's. You know, this is not, um, he's, he's, he's a veteran. Yeah. It looks like it looks like he did some work on action comics, uh, green lantern, the incredible Hulk alien. Oh yeah. So yeah. Hmm. Lots of work. Well, damn. <laughs> right on. That was a good one. 
Didn't see that coming. <laughs> we like that though, right? Yeah, yeah. I like that. So it's hard to top that one, but uh you know, we talked about whether, you know, but our picks if we should if we should try and give different things or kind of give give different things a spotlight when we have our when we make our picks and we we kind of have uh you know kind of move things around i just after reading the sacrificers number nine i just I, it's just so good it's just so good the the arc from from where we from where we met pigeon in issue one the journey that pigeon has taken to this issue and it's just fantastic storytelling i mean for it to take nine issues to get from where we started to now it wasn't rushed. It felt, felt very natural. It felt like it, it all made sense. And it was it was never boring, his journey. So when we get to this point where we are now, I, I just I just love this character. It, it's, just a, it's just a fantastic arc. And it's not even, the story's not even wrapped up yet. The artwork is, as usual, stunning. It has like this muted color that certain colors pop. But it has a, like this muted texture to the page that it just feels heavy. It feels a little, a little gloomy. I think it fits the story really well, and that's been that's been throughout the whole series. But I, I never expected the story to take the turn it has. It's, I never really thought we'd get to this point from issue one. I didn't know what we'd get, but I didn't see this happening. It's just so well done, and it's this series. I think. If not one of my favorite series of the year, it's maybe the favorite because I, I don't, I can't think of one issue yeah. out of the nine that I just wasn't over the moon about. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, I read this one as well, so this one is is up there um, for as um, you know one of my top picks this week. Um, one of the things that I like about the pigeon character and this is not giving too much away, is that he is also very much a bull in a china shop right now. Yeah. Right? So he's seeming, he's trying to enact revenge, and maybe he thinks he's getting it, but anyway, it seems to have repercussions on this world. Yeah. You like, and I find that to be very complex about the character, you know. It's a great point. It, I think for him to be where he is now, and like you said, him looking for revenge, doesn't realize what, what he's really doing, right. the long-term effects of what he's doing. And maybe it'll work out, but I don't know. It seems like a, it doesn't seem like like the kind of story that's going to have, that's going to have a happy ending. So I don't, have, I don't have a lot of hope that things will work out for him, but uh, I just I I just love the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, me too. the The artwork is just uh, so unique, um, and it has this kind of fairy tale, but also very colorful and fantastical, and but has kind of a you know a, makes you feel like you're. It's not a. It's it's something that is designated for the you know a mature audience, I think, but it does. Mm-hmm. Actually, it does. The rating is T plus. I'm looking at the back, but um, you don't. It's not for little kids, but it has a. It's has a nice color palette and just brings you back to whatever maybe Lord of the Rings or where the wild things are. I don't know what, what, what. I wonder where Max Fiumara is pulling from or his influences. I'm very curious because it it brings something out in me, and I, from from my my younger days, and I but I don't know what. Yeah, that's a good point. It it does have that fantastical storytelling, like the kind of bedtime story vibe, mm-hmm. but it's anything but a bedtime story. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Was the sacrificers? You said it was a contender for you this week. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. It was up there for sure. Probably tied. Yeah. Yeah. If it if it wasn't so good, the one hand would have been 
my pick. It it just such a great such a great ending, such a great conclusion, and we're it, looking forward to seeing how the left hand ends because yeah, so many good books. It's hard to keep up, and that, that's I think that's why it's hard to continue reading books like for me like Spawn when I'm just not digging it and I'm trying to get into it. And there's there's so many other books that, you know, are looking for an audience or, or haven't found its audience yet. And it's, it's hard to, to choose something that you're not enjoying a whole lot over something that has potential that you may end up really enjoying. Mm -hmm. And, um, not, not, uh, maybe a hot take, uh, but not for the two of us, but, uh, you know, some of these (laughs) other titles, the, you know, the ultimate Marvel series or, or what have you aren't, aren't necessarily punching their weight compared to some of these other, the series that, that we've talked about today. Yeah. I think, you know, with, with like reading spawn, it made me I, I harp on this all the time, but I, if you don't have all the continuity, if you haven't been reading since the beginning, if you have, if you don't know what happened five years ago in issue two, 20 or whatever, mm-hmm. it may not hit for you. You may, you may not have the impact of, a, of an event that happens now. And I get that you want to continue these long stories and build that, build these stories. And you want to have all these years of continuity. And that's something to be proud of that you've built it. But for someone like me or for us who are getting into these books now, trying to find our footing, it's just not a very, not a very enjoyable place to be because it just doesn't have, the impact. So if you're not, if you don't go back and, and kind of do some research, it just doesn't hit the same way that maybe it would for someone reading for the last several years or decades mm-hmm. in some, some cases. Yeah. And I think that's why so many number ones are so popular because it, it, we're looking for something new and something exciting we can get on the ground floor on and, and kind of, you know, kind of start, start at the beginning. Yeah, my, I'll get off my soapbox <laughs> again. I do this every week. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I've mentioned it as well. It's definitely true for me. I, I'm, I'm, I think you had read much more Spawn than I, I had. I really hadn't read any, and but I didn't continue after that issue three fifty because I was lost. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I, I kept hearing that this is a great place to jump on if you, if you, if you've been off of it for a while. I thought this is my time. I just. No, nah, it's just not grabbing me. But we're at issue 47. We only have a few more before we hit 50, which is wild. It's been a great journey. And uh, yeah, submit some questions if you want to uh, have us read your question. And, and uh, we'd love to have an, inter- have an interactive kind of thing with you. And yeah, it, it's going to be fun. We have a few questions already from the forum. Speaking of the forum, if you'd like to join, uh, talk to us, give us recommendations, talk comics with us, join our forum at pagejoin.com, uh, register for an account, and you can DM us there. Or we have a section dedicated to this podcast. We'd love to hear from you and interact and just shoot the shit with you. Just have fun. Um, yeah, get in touch and uh, hope everyone has a great week and enjoying the hotter weather now that it's coming in or not. <laughs> so. Well, cool. So everybody have a great week and we will talk to everyone very soon. Bye now.